Hi guys, it's Doc Curry and the markets were super red today, but my portfolio was super green. I'm going to tell you how I made 35% today, how a lot of viewers were up 600%, and how I'm playing this continued market correction. So let's get into it! Okay, so Monday was the worst day in the market since October of last year. And what happened in October of last year? That was the last time that we had a market correction. Now, I am 100% convinced that we are in the middle of a market correction. All of the indices are down about 4% from highs. If we are in fact in a market correction right now, stocks will drop another 5 to 15% from here. So I am being patient before buying any more stocks right now. I am mostly holding cash and I'm just waiting. What my goal is right now is to find the short-term options that we can play to take advantage of the markets. On Friday, I bought a bunch of put options on the SPY and QQQ, which I talked about in Friday's video. I sold those put options for 140% profit, and then I turned around and opened up more put options, which I sold for another 100% on top of that. Now, I will let you know that historically, even after a September correction, we should end the year at a new all-time high, which is why I have not sold any of my long-term hold stocks. I am holding on to my long-term hold stocks, but most of my portfolio, about 70% of it, is in cash right now so that I can buy the dips and take advantage once the market is done correcting. I do think the market correction will last through the end of September and into the first two weeks of October, but starting in the middle of October, I think we're going to rebound, and by the end of December, we should be at a new all-time high in the indices. And so that is why I'm holding my long-term hold stocks and I have not sold them at all. Now, I do want to cover Evergreen real fast because a lot of YouTubers talked about Evergreen's collapse in China and how that could tank the markets further. Now, we already covered this in a prior video, but just to remind you, Evergreen holds more than 10% of all Chinese real estate assets. They are bankrupt, and the collapse of Evergreen could lead to a larger real estate crash than the U.S. saw during the financial crisis. That will lead to issues in other areas such as construction and banking. In fact, this could put 3.8 million Chinese citizens out of work. The decline in asset values will spread beyond China as investors are hurt by the losses in Chinese assets. This will eventually hurt asset prices in Europe and the United States. And as banks have losses in the assets, they're going to have to sell other assets to make up for it. And that's going to create a snowball effect where assets overall are just going to continue to go down. Now, this will probably result in banks tightening lending standards to reduce risk so that they can avoid losing money on a similar collapse here in the United States that in turn could cause other companies that are having difficulty getting lending to start having a loss in asset values as well and to also go down. So that's what's happening with Evergreen. It's bad right now. It could get a whole lot worse. The question is, will the Chinese government go and bail them out? If the Chinese government goes and bails them out, then we should be pretty much okay. But if the Chinese government just lets them collapse, that is going to have a massive trickle-down effect throughout the economy over the next six months to a year. Now, I want to get into a few stocks that I want to talk about today. I also want to show you guys the indices so you can see a few technical patterns that I noticed that caused me to sell out of all of my put options today. I even considered doing call options, but I'm going to hold off on that. And so I want to go over the indices to explain why I made those decisions today so that you can kind of get into my brain a little bit. And then I've got a few stocks I want to cover as well. So for those of you guys who are new to this channel, my name is Stock Curry. I used to work as an analyst for some large investment banks, and now I analyze stock picks on YouTube. Every day I spend hours and hours and hours watching YouTube videos from the top YouTubers, and then I consolidate all of their stock picks and they put them together into a single video. I gave you both the cliff notes on their stock picks as well as my analysis on their stock picks. Now, if anything I talk about today piques your interest, make sure you listen to who I say talked about that stock and then go watch their video to get the full details on what they said. Now, all I ask for putting all of this together for you guys is that you hit that like button, subscribe, and follow the page so that you can get notified when I release my next video. In fact, I'll give you five seconds to do that right now.
All right, before we get into today's stock picks, I just want to remind you that I am not a financial advisor. Nothing I talk about today is a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold. These are just my opinions, which may or may not be accurate. Please do your own research before investing in any asset. If you're wondering what you're looking at right now, this is the Weeble desktop app. Weeble is the app that I use in my trading, and it is also the app that I use in all of my videos. All right, let's get into today's stock picks. Okay, first up, I just want to show you the SPY. This is an S&P 500 ETF. Now you can see how SPY bounced off of the 100-day EMA today. You can also see how in the daily chart, we are nearly oversold, but not quite yet. Now, when I saw that we were close to the 100-day EMA, I was getting concerned that we might get a little bit of a rebound on Tuesday. I was holding put options all day on Monday, and then I saw this on the hourly chart. I saw that the hourly chart was becoming severely oversold. In fact, at this point in the day, the RSI was all the way down to 12.98. I was getting very concerned that we were going to get a rebound and that we were actually going to go green on Tuesday. So near the close here, as I saw the RSI start to go up, I actually closed out of all of my put options. And it's a good thing I did because the stock market ran up quite a bit in the last hour of the day and the put options that I sold here actually lost half of their value in the last hour of the day. So this is why I'm thinking that we might get a green day on Tuesday. Now moving over to the QQQ, we see a similar situation except for this chart's looking a lot more bearish because we're a little bit further off of the RSI and we are also below the 50-day EMA but above the 100-day EMA. The QQQ is a NASDAQ 100 ETF. So the QQQ is actually looking a lot more bearish than the SPY is. And finally, we have the DIA, which is a Dow Jones Industrial ETF, and this one is looking very bearish as well. The only thing is, this is the closest to oversold of all of the indices. So this is another indicator to me that we might have a green day on Tuesday, and in fact, we can see that the aftermarkets are already up 0.28%. So overall, I think we're going to have a little bit of a green day on Tuesday, maybe 0.05 to 0.35%. We might get back up to around the 100-day EMA here and then continue going lower on Wednesday and Thursday. But we'll just have to see. I just wanted to get out of my put options because I think it's very likely that we're going to have a little bit of a green day on Tuesday and I wanted to lock in my profits. Okay, now moving on to the actual stock picks and first up is CHPT. This is ChargePoint, and they are the largest charging station company in North America with 45% of the total market share. They are also starting to expand globally. Stockmo is thinking about adding on to a CHPT position. Despite Monday's pullback, CHPT is still not down to the $19.50 level where I would add on at. I think CHPT could drop further, and I would wait before adding on. Next up is LCID. This is Lucid Group, and they're an American EV manufacturer. LCID was up today on a very red day. That is extremely bullish. So I just wanted to give you some updates on why LCID continues to run up, and it all has to do with rumors that LCID will start delivering vehicles by the end of this month. Keenan Grace pointed out a couple of things. First, LCID acquired 10,000 VIN numbers for the 2022 model year vehicles. Second, someone in Keenan Grace's Discord said he spoke with two Lucid employees, and they said that the first customers who pre-ordered will receive their Lucid Airs at the factory tour that is scheduled to take place on September 28th. Of course, this is all rumors, but if LCID does start delivering vehicles by the end of this month, as they said they would, that should cause the stock price to continue higher. I will reiterate that LCID is a gamble in the short term, but I am long-term bullish on LCID. I continue to hold my 2023 leap call options on LCID. Next up is NIO. This is NIO, and they're a Chinese EV manufacturer. Stockmo likes NIO at the current price. He's thinking about buying more shares. I will admit that NIO is oversold at this point. It is also at a very strong support level of $35. Even though I think NIO might continue dropping a little bit further, I do not think it will drop too much further from here. I would be comfortable starting the dollar cost average into NIO at the current price. 
Next up is RSI. This is Rush Street Interactive, and they're a gambling company. Stockmo said companies are looking into buying RSI, but he did not specify which companies. RSI remains overbought in the short term. Buying a stock at a premium in anticipation of a possible acquisition is a complete gamble. If you had bought RSI under $10, that would have been fine. But at this point, it's overbought, and I do not believe the upside potential outweighs the downside risk. I would rate RSI a hold. And last up is TSLA. This is Tesla, and they're an American EV manufacturer. Stockmo said he bought more TSLA on Monday. He said it is discounted and he likes the pullback. Personally, I am not going long in any positions right now in the short term. I am just holding all of the positions that I currently have. We are in the middle of a market correction and I do expect stocks like TSLA to continue dropping further. That is backed up by the technicals on TSLA. It closed below the 21 day EMA on Monday and the MACD just formed a death cross. So I would recommend being patient and waiting a few weeks for this correction to finish before buying into stocks again. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and got a lot out of it. Comment down below what stocks you plan on buying after this correction is over. And if you're looking for a broker to trade with, now is by far the best time to get started trading. You can sign up for Webull using my link in the description below. And when you deposit just $100 using my link in the description below, Webull's going to send you two free stocks worth up to $2,300. Now, if you're not a U.S. resident or if you like to trade OTC penny stocks, then I recommend Interactive Brokers. Interactive Brokers is a highly discounted trading platform. They're available in 180 countries worldwide. And both Webull and Interactive Brokers give you the full pre market and after hours trading from 4 a.m. until 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, I do want to remind you that I have material connections with both Webull and Interactive Brokers, so whenever you sign up for either one of those, not only are you getting a great broker to trade with, you're also helping me to continue to produce these great videos for you. Now, finally, I want to remind you to hit that like button, subscribe, and follow the page if you haven't already. I hope you have a lot of success trading, and I will see you tomorrow.